That's perfect. Also, Actually, oh. we'll just break it back to day one when I said, Jeff, is there anything ever going to be built on this hillside? And you said, Chris. Is that actually on video? Chris, probably somewhere in the thousands of videos I have. Huh. Jeff said, absolutely not. So when we pour the footings, we want to knock out a few other things that need concrete, like this, which will be the drive over. So this was that, or is, the little hallway that goes to the theater that's down there. So what you're seeing here is Josh is going along and taking off the exterior foam where we're going to be pouring concrete against it so when this lid gets poured we want it to attach to concrete uh not be laying up against the foam so he's clearing all that out of the way now you're going to see i'm coming up on the tractor i'm just dumping some number four stone in because when it rained it's so muddy up there i'm going along the side wall right now when we poured those walls uh, a couple months ago we left some rebar sticking up so that when we poured that slab, that slab would then also uh, have, you know, tie into the wall somewhat. And we're, I don't show it, I think, in this video, but we come down and we notched a little bit on the side too so that it kind of goes over the edge of the wall to help as another water stop. All this will get waterproofed as well. What do you think, Josh? I think you're great at math. Is that sarcasm I detect? Why'd you think that? Hmm. All right, so this gives you an idea of what we're doing. So Josh took the foam off. We're going to come in roughly a couple inches above the floor, drill in for our rebar on both sides, stick, shoot some epoxy in there, pop those in, then they'll come along here. It's 12 pieces of rebar, number five total across. So it's spaced out about eight inches on center and then we're going to come across here and do our crossbars which will tie into the ones that we poured in the wall you know a couple months ago all right so one side is epoxied drilled and epoxied in we're going to let that set up and we'll drill all those epoxy those bend it just a little bit which is another thing that's nice about this fiberglass rebar being a little flexible so we'll pop that in then we'll have a grid all the way across. That we're gonna build a platform over instead of just trying to do some, some sort of railing, nothing really to attach it to right now. So we're gonna build a platform over that for safety. And then as soon as we put our first row on, we're gonna start having an edge. So we'll come up pretty fast, uh, the first two rows, and then we'll be into Hell, we might be in the window. I can't remember. We might be in the windows in the first after the first row. Can't remember. But anyway, the first one or two rows, like two rows goes pretty quickly and then blah 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 blah, right? Blah blah. Blah 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 I'm not putting this in the channel. This will be for the grandkids to watch one day. Mm -hmm. Can you do something? Blah, blah. Sorry, kids. So we should be ready. We got all that rain. So of course we got water sitting in the footings. I cut what ditch I could with that one and got it mostly down, the one down at the bottom. I've got the pump going in now. And then when that one's drained, I'll move it up here. And then I gotta move it down to the bottom of the pool. So we got James over there uh, putting the roof on again. 
I thought we already had it on once, but I must have missed out. I'm 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 agreeing. I must have missed out. You made me take it back off. Yeah, but I thought it was in with the phone. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. Cut down four inches. Yeah, I remember that. Cut down four inches. Yeah. And then we had to extend some more legs. So yeah. I'm fall through the roof again. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just thinking out loud here that uh. All I'm going to say is we're going to find out if you learn from your mistake. Because well, I already see a problem. What's the problem? What's missing? What, the two before? Nope. What made that one fall in? Besides a little bit of sketchiness. At the bottom? This one didn't move. All right, just saying. Yeah, this, this one don't move like that one did. Okay. Anyway, see this extra little hole? I mean... It's four it. whole bars. I mean, it ain't like it's hard. Yeah, did we got, well, did they use them all? No. We got we got a stack of some more. Not many, but we got a few more. Right. So go ahead and put them in just in case. That way, if you fall again, I can't blame you. It's hard to blame you because they didn't do it. <laughs> I'm still hurt. I know. I wish they would have done it. Yeah. They would have done it where they didn't fall. <laughs> all right. Huh, look at that. One of the boards we're looking for. Yeah, it's a little bit of a drop, isn't it? There you go. All right, walked around, saw this. You probably saw it on Chris's channel. Had to dig the footings out more because of the four inch rain we got that we weren't supposed to get. They're coming down, coming by to inspect the, you know, they do a little rod to inspect the hardness of the ground. He had to go extra deep here uh, because this was an area that apparently when we built the pond that we had filled with some topsoil dirt. So it's where my topsoil went. Make sure we're good before we do the rebar. These footings are 12 inches thick. The problem about that short, uh, the length of the wall, you want us to lay it in the center of it, which I mean, you said you want to look at it too. Yeah, now put it all to one end. All to one, I figured. And then when you go down to the lower pool, look down there at the steps. You see what I see? Yes, one right there. That's yeah. what I was talking about, the ones for the... Uh, right. For the, uh, I just couldn't get it out. But... All right, so they're putting up the form boards. We have one more of these. Down. Tater's grabbing it. Yeah, so just push this all to one side. You might have to take a picket off or something. Yeah. But, so roughly right here, how far up are we? Above the point right now, yeah. Probably an inch and a half, two inches right here already. All right. So, you see where it is on the right side? Uh huh. That's the height I want the whole thing. So just get a level. Right there. Right there. The yep, and make sure the other one matches it. And there we go. Okay, we got you. We got There's you. James Brown. I don't know what he's doing. Probably anything but what he's supposed to be doing. Oh. Bathroom time. Get some helpers, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> all right. Huh, I guess maybe I should mark on the wall where I put all that stuff, huh? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bury the one inch line to the well. I've got a fiber optic in armored cable that goes from here to the well. That, my friends is armored multi-mode fiber pre-terminated from land shack and they did they have no idea who i am i just ordered it and all that test results included all right so i got four pair so i've got two for spares it wasn't that much more money comes with a pulling eye and this is going to run from the house to the wellhouse RV, which will eventually be a actually ICF wellhouse with holding. I talked about that earlier. So yeah, this is the last thing that's got to go in the trench. Uh, this is direct burial, but armored. It's not just a direct burial jacket. It's actually um, a strong, not going to break 
type deal. So let's get that run so Chris can backfill the trench. So that little well house and the RV, all that ends up being a building which will house the filter system, a 5,000 gallon water tank, pumps and all that stuff. So we just pump out of the well into the holding tank and then we can pump out to the property from there. We'll do a pump that pumps to the house and then you know, we'll have some ability to water out there and everything. So that's what happens over with that. Love doing work twice, it's great. Looks like I pulled up just in time. Yep, I need a hand. All you gotta do is pull that back. All right, I'll rig through it. <laughs> I was actually gonna cut it so it'd be out of our way because then I was gonna run it through the retaining wall when he builds it. Yeah, I don't mind. If you just wanna pull it up for now, I'll be, mm -hmm. just hold it back and I'll push it. Hold on. Do what you wanna do. If I've got the tool in here, I'll just cut it. If I don't, I'll hold it up. How about that? And look at there, I'm prepared. It's just like every day. Every day. <laughs> every minute of every day. Yep. <clears throat> crunch, crunch, crunch. You know? Mm, how's that working for you? You film. You want me to film this way? Yeah, this perfect. Oh, we missed the live action. I think it just broke instead of It did. Huh. Junk. It's junk. Just junk. You wanna you wanna put some tape over that or mark yeah. it somehow? Yeah, I got it. It will be covered and uh it'll be buried is what it'll be. Oh, all right, enough you broken record, okay? I've been down here two weeks, man. What do you want? It puts the lotion on its skin. Now very, very quiet. He's working. Who? Man, look at them Flintstone feet. Well, it looks like we found my missing topsoil. Yep. So here is our original ground right there. Original that, ground. That's, that's untouched. Yep. That's your inch and a half topsoil I did bury. Ooh. You know, I'm not yeah. gonna lie, I did bury it. <laughs> about, that, about that layer right there. Yeah. And then we started with our ashes from the fires we spread out. Yeah. <laughs> and then I capped it with like 18 inches of dirt from the pond. So now, so basically what I'm doing now is paying you to take back out the dirt that you put in. Yes. Nice. It's great. See, you too could be a genius like me. We do it right because we do it <laughs> twice. All right. Well, that's perfect. Also, Actually, uh, we'll just break it back to day one when I said, Jeff, is there anything ever going to be built on this hillside? And you said, Chris. Is that actually on video? Chris, probably somewhere in the thousands of videos I have. Huh. Jeff said, absolutely not. There That's, was a tree up there at the corner of the house that said there will never be anything built farther than this. Why would I build anything here? <laughs> I mean, it should have been pretty obvious. But the county did make you move it down the house to where you didn't want it. So. Yeah, that's true. It's the county's it, fault. It just happens to be where the hill was. Yeah. Thanks, county. And we needed to get rid of all that from the pond. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. the good news is that... Uh, it's a solvable issue. Yeah, we're down to original ground now. Yeah, see? There you go. All right. So we'll just dig on through there. And then that'll give us our base for the footing. And then uh, Casey will come in here and build the retaining wall starting in there and coming on up. Need to get something for that, cap that off. And uh, when he builds the wall, I'll just pour a drill wherever I want something. Did figure out that was easiest. I know there were a couple people who said that. It's just easier just to drill later where you need something because you can't. Number one, you can't remember everything you're gonna need. Number two, it's never in the right spot. And even if it's out by quarter inch, sometimes that matters. So 
better just to drill it. All right, so James got this put back in. Of course, he's asking me, what else can I do? Even though he's got all his trash up here. So hit him up about that when he gets back. All right. Pretty close. Yeah. That's good. Did you see my big rolls of uh, HDE pipe I up did. there? Isn't that nice? Like yeah, yeah. That's going to be fun to unroll and put in the pipe, in the trench. I don't want to be here for that. Yeah, I suggest you don't. That'll be the slinky day when yeah. it's all crisscrossed. Yes, absolutely. You end up having to pull out like 400 feet. Well, they're supposed to be in 400 foot rolls, but I'm pretty sure it's like 600 foot rolls. All right. Fun stuff. All right. So this will get pulled, pulled, poured, along with everything else, and there we go. What do you think? All right. Dog Dog wants to check out the progress, so let's go do it. favorite thing to do. I don't blame him. It's nice. No, that's what I heard crack and pop. I knew I heard something earlier. And I mean, why? Look at that. <laughs> Two of them. I love it. Anyway. Alright, so we got two pipes in. Now. So that should be nice. We got a more defined ditch there now, supposedly. We got our ditch for the water pipe and fiber. So that's gonna happen. And yay, that goes all the way to the house. So that'll be good. We got that ready for concrete. Whoa. Yeah, we got that ready for rebar. That's ready for concrete. That's ready for rebar. I would not. Dog, dog, what are you doing? Oh, what's that on the ground? Seems to be one inch PEX A going out the house. Here it comes. Oh, and look. We got yellow, I got some tracer wire. So we'll be able to find this trench later if we need to. Of course, this gets buried up this high, so it'll be plenty under our frost line, which is only not even a foot, really. Ugh. I tell you what, Chris sure does dig a nice trench. Round and round and round it goes Whoop, over to there. And then he's gonna finish digging that little bit to the well house, that's where they pulled it to. When UPS arrives today, I'll show you what else is going in here. Then Chris will fill it back in tomorrow and be like it never happened. Hello. Look, Jeff went back in time. Oh, anyway, <laughs> pray tell, what are you doing today? We're putting in rebar with a crew. A crew? A crew, instead of just me. I got you some help. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. See, don't say I never did anything for you. There's your help. Yep. Help, help. There's my little brother Tater. <laughs> your older brother Tater. <laughs> and here's our great uncle Jeff. <laughs> hey, hey, he's 87 years old, but he's still out here getting it done. All right, I've uh, got to put a little bit of rock in the bottom, not much. It's not going to be that number four that James went and scooped up after Josh told him not to. 
because he done less than Big Shock. Pile right back up where it was and then get the 57 stone that we got in, put a little bit, they'll have to rake it out. We'll have to take the beep beep and make sure of our levels. Uh, not a terrible ordeal, but that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this tied up today. If we get the corners, they're not really corners. And then we can get our inspection, which is happening today. I mean, technically we could get concrete tomorrow, maybe. Probably too late to get some uh, concrete truck and pump truck in here, but we'll try maybe, we'll see. See what happens. All right, well, let's do it. Currently noon on Wednesday, and we are pouring footings at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So Josh is tying that up. Jeff is helping tie. Taters making sure that anything that was cut a little wide is trimmed back. I'm gonna take the beep beep, set it up, and I'm gonna go through and place nails at the elevation that we need all the footing. So that's done. This has been cut back, so it'll be ready. Um, yeah. So we're pouring the four footings. I'm gonna fix that little place we missed in the wall. It's gonna take like, it's like a quarter of a yard. We're gonna fix that. We're pouring the roof to the pump house, pouring the floor of the pump house, and we're pouring the underground hallway up top 
So that's what's getting done tomorrow. It's 34 yard pour. It's really a 30 plus, just in case we need a little bit. But I gotta be uh, quick on that last yardage and guess correctly. It's like the price is right. Guess correctly without going over. Cause that over cost you. But I tell you what costs you more is when the pump, it takes them about an hour from the time you call them with that last yardage. So that means I call them, guess what sits for an hour? Pump truck, guess what the pump truck costs an hour? 280 bucks, that's two yards of concrete. Well, not quite now, it's about one and a half yards of concrete. So you can burn up, uh, you can burn money up many ways. So uh, I've got it figured at 34, so if I pour those first, which is what we're gonna do because some concrete will leak through the top, you get to see how the super floor works. It's a little sneak peek till we do the, uh, the main floor. So that in the bottom, we'll see what Casey wants to start with, but we'll probably do the pump truck. I'm gonna try and go and set the pump, like down here actually. Then he can hit that, that, hit that, that, and then he just goes over and hits that hallway in the back. Uh, so it'll be this, this is 13 yards, so that's over a truck, that's about eight. So this two together will be the first two trucks. Third truck pulls up, we start on that. I know those two together should be about six yards. So that, and then picking up, uh, we got the, no, duh, we got that big footing there. So by the time I get to the third truck, I'll know what we have left. So when I see it pull up, I should already be able to figure out and call in my uh, my plus. So all right, enough yapping, because uh, Josh needs my help. He sees me over here just yap, yap, yapping away. See, James is setting up lights because that's right, when the trucks come, it will be dark. We will be almost done pouring by the time sun rises. So we gotta have enough lights going on. I've got a couple big ones like that, and then uh, I'm gonna get a couple more, pick up a couple more, just to, just to have X ones laying around so we're not moving lights, so we're just set up. And this will let us go ahead and see how well we can see at night so we can start doing some of that, because right now it gets uh, a bit ridiculous. It would be nice to be able to work at night, so. All right, that's all I got, let's do it.